Bonjour à tous. Je ne sais pas si on m'entend bien. Oui. Thank you for being here. I, I think I would like to, to speak in, in English, if, if you don't mind. But please excuse my poor English beforehand. Um, I will present you the Blue Shield. Um, how many of you have sh already heard about Blue Shield? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I will give you sh a short explanation about this. Blue Shield is based on the Hague Convention of 1954 about cultural heritage protection and conf armed conflicts. And we are a network of uh, five NGOs, a movement of organizations and volunteers working for the protection of cultural heritage and in case of conflicts, uh, but also uh, major disasters. We are NGOs, we have a professional approach, we are making working to together people from cultural heritage field, but also security, military people. And we are five NGOs, as I, as I told you, which are from the archives. I come from museums, uh, monuments and sites, the, the libraries with IFLA, and WCAAA means uh, the um, uh, audiovisual archives associations. We are an international network of organizations, so we have national committees all around the world, in Africa, in Europe also, um, Indonesia and Australia, and in Americas. We have three, um, three organizations. ICBS, it's like the Red Cross organization. We have ICBS, which is the International Committee of the Blue Shield, the Federation of the National Committees, and the 20 or 30 national committees themselves. What we are doing, um, we have many actions, organiz organizing workshops and trainings, making stat statements when disaster happens, uh, conferences, developing partnerships with other NGOs or governments, raising awareness for the, the public, for instance, or also militaries, and developing tools for the, for the firemen, for the, the people working into the culture area. Uh, training is an absolute prior priority for us, developing the risk culture by cultural heritage professionals, then sensitization and introduction of cultural heritage protection in military training. There are three degrees into the training, training materials we are developing. We are organizing exercises for cultural heritage professionals. This is a um, simulation of a, a fire on library. So people are trained firemen, but also uh, the professional of the cultural heritage. They can train, train themselves on how to, how to recover after fire. Sensitizing the public. We show them, for instance, the, the damages by, by floods. Sensitizing army forces. This was a, a lecture given for the Simic Center of Excellence. Training military units mainly it's in Austria and um, in the United States. Our goal is also to have more governments uh, ratifying the, the Hague Convention and using new technologies to help professionals. We are developing, you're using social networks and others. Providing help also in case of disaster since 2009. We have made um, intervention and uh, organized two international missions in Cologne, in Germany, where they, um, for the municipal archives. We sent there uh, 150 volunteers uh, two, during two weeks in April and in August. So this is some key figures and some, some images about the work that has been done. and also in Haiti, where we are trying to build a treatment center for the documentary heritage affected by the earthquake of 2010. If you want to contact us and if you have questions, please, I'm, I'm here for here for this. Thank you very much for your attention. Please. 
le second PowerPoint. Vous voulez pas Non, mais c'est bon, j'ai ce qu'il faut. Il y, y a un deuxième PowerPoint. Vous savez, non Le 0.32, où est vie Dans la liste. Euh, 13h30 au-dessus. Euh, au-dessus de celui-ci, voilà. Ok, good, good afternoon. My name is uh, Philippe Garnier. I am an architect. I'm coming from an organization called Crater, based at uh, the National School of Architecture of Grenoble. I'm going to present you not the organization because you will find the information on the internet, but uh, how we take uh, uh, cultural heritage as a resource for a uh, natural disaster. And I call my uh, introduction Building Culture and Resilience. Um, we, we are dealing with, uh, with mud, uh, to make the things clear, uh, with uh, things that have uh, the reputation to be fragile, vulnerable, and so on, uh, which are uh, deeply uh, uh, in, uh, encompassed in the traditional uh, knowledge of people, and above all, we work with people and knowledge, the traditional knowledge. Um, the, the uh, the situation of, of uh, sorry, the situation of uh, post disaster uh, uh, in the recent time is seen as a hopeless situation for this type, sorry, for this type of environment. Uh, as people used to think that uh, to save or to rescue people or to rebuild a situation, we need to focus on external high technology and international standards. But uh, this type of conventional approach, which can be uh, all right for uh, different environments, has a, a, a great limitation because very often after uh, uh, this type of situation, okay, um, uh, the, uh, the vast majority is not helped and served by uh, uh, the different activity of reconstruction. And people are somehow left with products that they cannot duplicate, that they cannot afford, and they cannot modify it to fulfill their needs and capacity. And also, all the money spent in the aids are uh, uh, running out of community uh, that are affected while they can make a, a, a double impact, I would say. Okay, it is quite easy to criticize, and it's not the purpose of my, uh, my talk, uh, what uh, has been done, but I'm going straight forward to the next things to show some example of how we can deal with traditional knowledge and traditional culture. Uh, like uh, here in Kashmir, in Pakistan, after the, the, the earthquake, uh, if you are able to, uh, uh, to understand, to observe how people used to deal with natural disaster, with natural hazard, they, are, they have experienced for many years and so on, you will see some little details of construction that, sh that show that people, that civilization had, have developed specific knowledge uh, to take into account in the construction uh, uh, process. Uh, and the, the, things, the, the main mission for, for us at this stage is to help the people at local level to uh, uh, give new value, I would say, to this type of knowledge and to identify the different uh, uh, aspects and also to try to uh, put it back into, I would say, the scientific uh, uh, discipline. And here it's the modeling of the traditional structure that you, will, you, you could have found in the Kashmir area in Pakistan. And to understand how this structure is behaving during an earthquake and uh, what is the, 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 the difference in between, I would say, the traditional structure and the conventional one to see that some walls may have collapsed, but the roof still still uh, uh, in perfect condition, and this type of structure has not uh, killed any uh, persons. And then the second phase is also to go into a, a prototype phase to see if we can, uh, of course, use uh, in the concrete uh, situation uh, the, and with some improvement or some details uh, to reincorporate the, the, the traditional knowledge into a more I would say uh, formal knowledge, scientific knowledge. Uh, okay, in Kashmir, there was uh, this tradition of uh, 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 building earthquake resistance because you will find people experiencing regular earthquake. While, while it was not the case in BAM, w from the memory of people, uh, you will hardly find some uh, uh, good uh, local solution, but we use the, the, the mud, the, the earth construction, to develop uh, earthquake-resistant building uh, that could be uh, reused by people, 
but also by the traditional uh, uh, workers, the artisans, and so on. Then, what is, what is also important is to move from the reconstruction process into the prevention and to try to work in advance. And here we're involved in other cities in, in, uh, uh, in, in Iran to uh, 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 reduce the vulnerability of the traditional historical center. Then very quickly, to, to, uh, uh, to conclude, because I have uh, less than one minute left, we are involved in Haiti, where the similar situation has occurred with the, with the earthquake, and where, by studying the traditional structure, you will identify the value and the resource that you can find, but also the, 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 the weaker point, and to go into a different uh, building system that people can reuse uh, by improving their stability against the earthquake, to go also into a uh, the uh, modelization and uh, tests into uh, 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 what is called a vibrating table, and then to go into a reconstruction program like you can see here, and finally in the middle to reincorporate this knowledge into a training center. Okay, I think I will not, I have no more time. Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, to conclude, it's to uh, review certain of the remarks I've done about the cultural heritage and traditional to be seen as a very important asset for community and a place where you can really find good solution uh, uh, for reconstruction, but also for prevention. And it is very important that professional, that decision makers open their eyes and, and their mind to see not only the vulnerability of this type of structure, but also the assets of each territory and what type of natural resources are available and human resources. Uh, it is also very important for people that would like to use this type of approach to be demonstrative, not just to talk, but really to test on the full scale what is the reaction of the professional reaction of the community and to see to adapt the different model that can be uh, developed and to be flexible into the development of project if you are too much under pressure by donors to deliver 500 houses in six months it's almost impossible with this type of uh, approach you need a certain time before to restart and to go into uh, much uh, full scale thank you very much